I get so emotional, baby. Every time I think of you, I get so emotional. Ain't it funny what love can do? I get so emotional. Oh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, baby. And it's shocking what emotions will do. Good morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me. Your host, Khadija. All right, y'all know we got to do this one because this um, is real important. And this is how to understand and identify our emotions. Okay? Um, now, we got to do it. We got to talk about it, people. We got to talk about it. Because your emotions are all over the place. And I know what that feels like sometimes. I mean, I know what it feels like to have your emotions all over the place. So let's talk about it, family. Let's talk about it. All right? Emotions control your thinking, behavior, and actions. Emotions create illnesses. All right? Um, emotions affect your physical body as much as your body affects your feelings and your thinking. People who ignore, dismiss, repress, or just ventilate their emotions are setting themselves up for physical illness. Emotions that are not felt and released but buried within the body or in the aura can cause serious illnesses such as cancer, arthritis, and many types of chronic um, illnesses, digestive problems, and respiratory issues. Negative emotions such as fear, anxiety, negativity, frustration, depression can cause chemical reactions in your body that are very different from the chemicals released when you feel positive and your um, emotions are happy, content, loved, and accepted. And remember, the enemy knows this. Okay? So to keep your emotions in constant flux and constant um, uh, discomfort is doing a great disservice to you from the inside. So when when people you hear people saying you you we're being destroyed this is the best way to destroy a people and look innocent okay um repress emotions lower your vibration it takes a lot of your vital energy to repress emotions and keep them repressed and you wonder why you're so tired this article is going to deal with uh, repressed emotions and how to identify and release those emotions. Okay. Now, with that being said, what are emotions? What are what are your feelings? I mean, what what does that what does that mean? Different people define emotions in different ways. Some make a distinction between emotions and feelings saying that a feeling is the response part of the emotion and that an emotion includes a situation or experience, the interpretation or the perception and the response or feeling related to that experience um, or a particular situation. For the purpose of this article, I use the term interchangeably. Okay. Dr. John Mack, I mean, John Mayer says, emotions operate on many levels. They have a physical aspect as well as a psychological aspect. Emotions bridge thought, feeling, and action. 
They operate in every part of a person. They affect many aspects of a person. And the person affects many aspects of the emotion. Dr. Maurice Elias says, emotions are human beings warning systems as to what is really going on around them. Emotions are the most reliable indications of how things are going on in our lives. Emotions help us to keep, I mean, help to keep us on the right track by making sure that we are led by more than mental, intellectual uh, faculties of thought, perception, reason, and memory. Um, belief systems. Underlying much of our behavior is what is called our belief system. Okay? This system within us, it filters what we see, what we hear, is affecting how we behave in our daily lives, people. Um, there are many other elements that affect our lives as well, including past lives and the core issues we come into this life for um, and the resolution. But our belief systems in this life have a major effect on what we do and what we think. Your belief system affects for your perception, how you interpret what you see, hear, and feel. Example, a person raised by an angry man or a woman will view people in the future with beliefs that anger is bad or that it is something to fear. Another example would be someone who is quite intelligent but who has never been encouraged or honored for their intelligence. This person might believe that they are stupid. Men raised in conservative societies might have the belief that women who work outside of the home are not as good as those who do not work outside of the home. It takes a lot of work and um, to look at yourself and identify the beliefs that are affecting your life in a negative and, an abu and in an abusive manner. However, knowing your beliefs will give you a sound basis for an emotional freedom. Not the beliefs that were perpetuated upon you or that was presented to you, but how you authentically feel. Um, I do believe that it's wise to deal with the belief systems before dealing with the identification and release of emotions. First things first. Um... Yeah, first things first. The only person who can change what you feel is you. The only person who can change what you feel is you. A new relationship, a new house, a new car, a new job, these things can momentarily distract you from your feelings, but no other person no other place, no material possession, no activity can remove, release, or change how you feel. How often do you hear people say things like, when I have enough money, I, I won't be afraid anymore, uh, only to find there, was, there never seems to be enough money to stop being afraid. Or... Um, when I'm in a secure relationship, I won't feel lonely anymore. And finally, that they are still lonely regardless of their relationship. We need to understand that um, we take our feelings with us wherever we go. A new dress, a new house, a new suit, a new job. None of those things will change how we feel. Our feelings will remain within us until we release them. And emotions are not the only cause of our illnesses. Emotions are not the um, um, 
They're just not. They're just not the only cause. Little babies and young children get ill, and not always because they're, there are emotional issues. There are many causes of illness, including, in, um, including emotions, but they are not the sole issue of your illness. The causes of illnesses today are quite different from the issues causing illnesses 20 or 30 years ago. We are living in a world filled with chemical, metal, and atomic poisons, radiations, pollution, and pesticides in our food. We are bombarded with all types of electricity. These energies affect the physical, mental, intellectual, and energetic field and emotional health of people. As we travel more, moving with ease from country to country, different types of infection causing elements and are spreading around the world more easily. Infections of parasites, worms, viruses, and different types of infections, bacteria are many types of um, and many types are 20 times greater than they were 20 years ago. Our water supplies are filled with chemicals and metals. Let me take a look at Flint. The benefits of antibiotics have also brought with them the difficulty of the candida fungus overgrowth and other physical and emotional difficulties. The causes of illness today are totally different. But I still contend there are two basic emotions that we all experience. In regardless of your color, race, creed. And that is love or fear. Love and fear. All other emotions have variations of these. Uh, all other emotions are variations of these two emotions. Love or fear. Thoughts and behavior come from either a place of love or a place of fear. Anxiety, anger, control, sadness, depression, inadequacy, confusion, hurt, loneliness, guilt, shame. These are all fear-based emotions. Emotions such as joy, happiness, caring, trust, compassion, truth, contentment, satisfaction. These are love-based emotions. Let me say that again. Let me say that one more time. Thoughts and behaviors come from either a place of love or a place of fear. Anxiety, anger, control, sadness, depression, inadequacy, confusion, hurt, lonely, guilt, shame. These are all fear-based emotions. All right. Remember that. Remember that. Emotions such as joy, happiness, caring, trust, compassion, truth, contentment, satisfaction. These are love-based responses and emotions. I'm sorry, emotions. There are varying degrees of intensity, in, intensity of both types of emotions. Some being mild, others being moderate, and others being strong and, and very strong in their intensity. For example, anger in a mild form can be felt as disgust or dismay. At a moderate level, it can be felt as offended or exasperated. And at an intense level, anger can be felt as rage or hate. And the emotion that always underpins anger, the emotion that always underlines that is fear. It's fear. You don't have to admit it. It is what it is. Emotions have a direct effect on how our bodies work. Fear-based emotions stimulate the release of 
one set of chemicals while love-based emotions release a different set of chemicals. If the fear-based emotions are long-term or chronic, they damage the chemical systems, the immune system, the in, uh, 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 doc, in, in, indoctrine system, in, the endocrine system, and other systems in your body. Our immune systems weaken in many serious illnesses set in. This relationship between emotions, thinking, and the body is being called mind, body, and medicine today. You cannot change or control your emotion. You can learn how to be live. You can learn how to be with them, living peacefully with them transmuting them which means releasing them and you can manage them but you cannot control your emotions think of people who go along day after day seeming to function normally and then all of a sudden they explode in anger at something that seems relatively trivial and harmless that is one sign of someone who is trying to control or repress their emotions but their repressed emotions are leaking out or have leaked out. The more anyone tries to control their emotions, the more they resist control and the more frightened people eventually become at what is to be seen as a loss of emotional control. It's a vicious cycle. It's important today to be politically correct. And that means <laughs> not challenging or disagreeing with what the average person believes. It means not expressing negative emotions in public, showing um, emotion in public in North America and European society represents being out of control. And that's considered a great sign of weakness. People feel uncomfortable with those who express strong emotions. We are a society who is taught to hide our emotions, to be ashamed of them, or to be afraid of them. Regardless, we are born with them, and they must live with us, and we must live with them. This means learning how to know them, be with them, and release them in a healthy manner. We each come into this lifetime with at least one core of issues to resolve. Different situations will continue to present themselves in your different but repeated pattern until you have dealt with the core issues and core beliefs in your life. A few examples of core issues are abandonment, victimization, demanding justice in all manners, living spiritually rather than materially. These are overarching issues that affect emotions completely. Many people find out about their core issues by learning to deal with their emotions. It is a gentle pathway that leads you into a deeper knowing of your core issues. Emotion Emotional abuse is a form of violence in a relationship. Emotional abuse is just as violent as a series of physical uh, or serious as physical abuse, but is often ignored or minimized because physical violence is absent. Emotional abuse can include any and all of the following elements. It can include rejection of the person or their value or worth. Degrading an individual in any way is emotionally abusive. In, and that involves uh, ridiculing, humiliating, insulting, uh, terrorizing, isolating the person. That is deeply abusive and happens to children, adults, and often the elderly. Exploiting someone is abusive. Denying emotional responses to another is deeply abusive. The silent treatment is a cruel way of controlling people and situations. Where there is control, 
There is no love, only fear. If you are living in a situation that is emotionally abusive, please seek help from either a professional or one of the many helpful organizations present in most communities. You need help to sort out your issues. Emotions stemming from emotional abuse are deep and complex, requiring ongoing help from those trained to deal with emotional abuse. People spend much time talking about how they feel. They attend workshops, they visit therapists, and they tell others who did not who did what to, to who did what to them and describe how they feel about it. They talk and talk and talk and talk about their feelings, but they don't talk about their feelings. They intellectualize and analyze their feelings without feeling them. People really deep down are afraid to really feel their feelings. Afraid of losing control. Afraid of the pain involved in feeling their emotions. Of feeling the sense of loss or failure or whatever the emotion brings with it. People are afraid to cry. So much so and that so much in their life is about what you feel rather than what you think. Being strongly connected to your emotional life is essential to living a life with high energy and a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. I was privileged um, to work with a person many years ago when I was learning about my emotional self. I remember the day Fred told me that he knew what I thought about the situation and then he asked me how did it feel. I was smiling as long as I was providing a description of the situation. As soon as I looked for the feeling inside of me, I began to cry. It did not feel very good. I was hurting. Fred used the term that just kept saying, go south. To help me to go to my feelings rather than an intellectual approach. He used to tell me, go south all the time. Many of our feelings reside in our midriff and our navel area. Right? That's where they are. That's the chakras. That's where they're located. Today, I will often tell myself, go south. Go south. So when I tell myself that, I know that I need to get in touch with my feelings. Well, that's just the first part that I want to talk about. And that, again, that's, that's like how to understand and identify your emotions. You know, but I, I want to also talk about how we repress our emotions. But I can do that in a later, later video. But right now, I just want you to soak in on how to understand and identify your emotions. Go down to that pit of your belly. And if it hurts you, release it. Especially for, you know. I just hate that the conditioning that we all have. Because that's what's messed up. Our conditioning. And especially those of us who are great, great, great granddaughters and sons of slaves. But sometimes we got to cry to ourselves. We got to get in touch with that emotion. And it's okay. It's okay. Because the anger is going to kill us. And the repression of it is going to kill us. All right. All righty. Let me be gone because this video lasts a little bit longer than I expected. But I'll be back a little later, you guys. And hopefully we can do another video um, uh, and talking about how we re repress those emotions, okay? All right.
like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and hit the little button. So if I do another video, you can be notified. See you next time in the mental house. Bye-bye.